Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well and of course Arnie does too. Now as my last video was quite depressing, I thought today I'd create a more uplifting one, just like my previous video on animal skulls. Today I will be testing you viewers. Today I will be going through 7 animal skulls and I'll be seeing if you can guess the animals from the skulls. Like last time I will be giving clues before revealing the owner of the skulls and of course some may be harder than others. And we'll start off with skull number 1. Now the first thing that pops out in this skull are its strange curved tusks. These are actually modified canine teeth and the rest of the teeth in the skull look suited to an omnivore. This skull is around 37 centimeters long, meaning that it belonged to a mid-sized animal. The owner of this skull is found on the Indonesian island of Sulawesi and typically inhabits swampy areas, normally around forests and lakes. In these areas this animal is omnivorous, feeding on pretty much anything it can find in its swampy home. I'm sure many of you would have guessed it already, but this skull actually belongs to the Barbarossa. Now there are four species of Barbarossa still alive today, but up until 2002 they were all believed to be the same species. These mammals are very unique members of the swine family, as they differ from other pigs in several ways. It's thought that they branched off from other pigs at an early part in their evolution, and their large canine teeth have led to them being called pig deer. Only the males possess these large teeth, and it's still a mystery why they actually have them. You may think that they use them to fight, but these tusks aren't built to withstand pressure, and they are actually quite brittle. It's thought that they serve a display purpose, and are used as a way to show off to females. In fact, these tusks keep growing throughout their lifetime, and can even bend back and penetrate their skull. This can sometimes lead to the death of the Barbarossa, which is quite a comedic way to go. And although it's quite an impressive skull, it's quite easy to guess. But next up we have skull number two. This skull is very thick and is heavily set. At the front of its mouth it has very large canine teeth, but quite a blunt snout. This skull measures around 61 centimeters long, meaning that it belongs to a very large animal. Now the owner of this skull can be found in Antarctica, where they spend a lot of their life in the freezing waters. In these waters, the owner of this skull is a predator and feeds mainly on fish and squid. As they are a relatively large animal, most aquatic predators leave them alone, but they are hunted by the kings of the ocean, the orcas. I'm sure many of you would have guessed it by now, but this skull actually belongs to an elephant seal. Now there are two species of elephant seal alive today, the northern and the southern elephant seal. This skull is of the southern species, and this species is the largest of the pinnipeds. There's a lot of sexual dimorphism in this species, with males being a lot larger than the females. These males are known for being very aggressive and will even take on cars and of course each other. These seals obviously got their name because of their large snouts and the males inflate these when they're displaying on beaches. So although this skull is slightly harder to guess, the size might have given it away. The next up we have skull number three. Now this skull is a very lightweight skull and seems to belong to an animal with a very long snout or beak. This skull is around 12 centimeters long, meaning that it belongs to a relatively small animal. The owner of this skull can be found in both Australia and New Guinea, where they're usually found in open forests and woodland. As the climate in which they're found can be quite unforgiving, they can often be found using caves and rock crevices to shelter from the harsh weather conditions. In these areas, the owner of this skull primarily feeds on ants and termites, but of course will take other insects as well. I'm sure many of you would have guessed it already, but this skull actually belongs to the echidna. These strange creatures are some of the most unique mammals in the world, and are one of only a few that lay eggs. The echidna along with the platypus are famous for laying eggs. Their long snouts come in very handy when they're digging for insects, and so do their long sticky tongues. Just like with hedgehogs, the spines on their back protect them from predators, and when threatened by predators, they will often dig shallow holes with only their spikes sticking out. So although it may have put some of you off because it looks bird-like, I'm sure a lot of you got this one right as well. But next up we have skull number four. Now this may seem like a very easy skull to guess, as of course it looks quite reptilian. As you can see, the teeth on this skull are quite blunt, indicating that this species may be omnivorous or herbivorous. The skull is around seven centimeters long, meaning that it came from a small to medium size reptile. Once again, the owner of this skull can be found in Australia, where it typically inhabits warm woodlands and open grasslands. In these areas they feed on insects, but another large part of their diet is made up by vegetable matter. As Australia can be quite a dangerous place for any animal, the owner of this skull does have a few predators. They are often taken out by wild dogs, as well as snakes and kookaburras. I'm sure many of you would have guessed it by now, but this skull in fact belongs to the blue-tongued skink. Now there are actually quite a few varieties of blue-tongued skink, and they've proved to be very popular in the pet trade. This is both because of their very colourful tongue and because of their temperament. Unlike many other lizards that are quite jittery and skittish, the blue tongue skink is more like a potato and is much easier to handle. Their diet also makes them very desirable, as unlike snakes, they do not need to be fed small dead animals. So even though it's quite easy to guess that it was a reptile, I wonder how many of you guessed this one correctly. But next up we have skull number 5. Now as you can probably tell by the teeth on this skull, it belongs to a predator. It has quite a long snout and at a length of around 22cm 
centimeters long. It's possible that this skull belongs to a medium-sized animal. The owner of this skull can be found in Africa and is mostly found in savanna and arid zones. They generally tend to avoid forests as it's harder for this animal to hunt in these areas. The owner of the skull is an impressive predator and feeds on many of the prey animals in the savanna areas. Despite this, they are obviously not the main predators in Africa and often lose out to leopards and of course lions. I'm sure many of you would have guessed it by now, but this skull in fact belongs to the wild African hunting dog. Now, I thought this one may be slightly harder to guess as this skull can look very similar to hyena skulls. Now this canine also goes by the name of African painted dog as they have very eye-catching coats. These dogs are specialist hunters of antelopes as they usually chase them to exhaustion. They are known for having incredible stamina and will simply chase prey for hours. Their natural enemies are hyenas as these hyenas will attack these dogs whenever they can and will also steal their kills. Unfortunately this species is listed as endangered today with habitat loss and hunting leading to these declines but they also do very poorly in areas with high concentrations of lions. So as this skull was very dog-like I'm sure a lot of you got there very quickly. But next up we have skull number six. Now of course this skull is very long and thin and almost looks like a leg bone of a very large animal. Although it's concealed, there are no teeth in this skull, and this skull measures around 40 centimeters long. The owner of this skull can be found in both Central and South America, and they can be found in a wide range of habitats. They tend to prefer grassland and rainforests, where the majority of their diet is made up by ants and termites. Although the owner of this skull is a relatively large animal, it is sometimes predated on by pumas and jaguars. I'm sure many of you would have guessed this one straight away, but this skull in fact belongs to the giant anteater. Now this skull was probably one of the easiest ones to guess as it has such a unique head shape. It is perfectly adapted for their lifestyle as it makes it very easy for them to get into termite mounds and their long tongues make short work of insects. To help them get at their prey they also have very sharp claws which they use to dig and find their prey. These claws can also be used in defense and these anteaters really shouldn't be messed with. So although this one's very easy to guess it's an interesting skull nonetheless. But finally we have skull number seven. As you can tell by the horns on this skull the owner is most likely a deer or an antelope but it almost seems like part of this skull is missing as there's a strangely large hole at the top of it. As you can tell by the teeth this animal is obviously a herbivore and most likely feeds on grasses. The owner of this skull can be found in Central Asia where it's mostly found in grasslands and semi-arid deserts. In these areas they primarily feed on grasses, herbs and lichens but they also have to look out for predators. They are preyed upon by wolves and foxes as well as large birds of prey. The owner of this skull is very rare nowadays and I'm sure many of you would have guessed that it belongs to the saiga antelope. Now the strange hole in the skull helps to accommodate its strange snout. These snouts make them look like an animal from Star Wars, but these snouts also come in very handy. In winter, they can often be found in very dry, cold areas, and this snout warms and moistens the inhaled air before it reaches their lungs. But that about wraps it up for this quiz. Let me know how many you got out of seven in the comments below, and I'll probably put a poll out too. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.